you're going to do. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, we do. Good morning. <laughs> We're going to do a couple of praise songs for you guys. And feel free to sing along and at home as well if you're with us virtually. So this one is What a Beautiful Name It Is. Sure, you guys have heard this one. You were the word at the beginning. One with God, the Lord most
one more for you guys and this one is more upbeat feel free to get up and move your body sing along this is Lord I lift your name on high hey Pastor Tom let's go <laughs> alright everyone follows
Join together in worship. Amen. Let us, um, Pastor. Just want to verify it's the opening hymn is that correct yes i get a thumbs up so please join uh, in our opening hymn united methodist hymnal number 57 oh for a thousand tongues to sing Good morning. Let us join together in the call to worship. We come before you, Lord, in humility to ask for your revolutionary indignation. We want to resist the temptation to securing false peace, which comes from comfort and blindness to the world. Make us unsettled with error, injustice, and hate, unsatisfied with the falsity of the world but with a great desire to work for its betterment. Make us indomitable of your reign that is the faith and justice worthy of receiving the words you have said. In the world you will have affliction, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And let us continue in joining together in our opening prayer. Today, God, we confess fumblings and failures in accomplishing unity as we set aside yet another day to remind ourselves of the task. On this World Communion Sunday, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. Give us a heart big enough to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a table with space enough for all. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Um, for the young disciples' time, let us call Bill Guy and the kids. Uh, 
it, it is supposed to be Melissa for the young disciples time, but uh, their office uh, refrigerator is not working. And she asked for prayer because she needs to move vaccines for the hundred, you know, a lot uh, because it needs to be refrigerated. So she's asking for prayers. And now we see a little guy to repl not replace, but uh, give us the message instead of Melissa. Okay, kids and guy, please. Good morning, young disciples. Do you guys know what this picture is? It is the Last Supper. You know what today is, though? World Communion Day. United Methodists celebrate World Communion Sunday on the first Sunday in October to, mer to pr promote, promote Christian unity. World Communion Sunday calls the church to reach out to all people and model diversity among God's children. This picture, The Last Supper, shows the time just before Jesus was crucified. He called his disciples together for a meal. He took a piece of bread and he told the disciples that the bread was to remind them of his body that would be hung on a cross for them. Then he took a glass of wine and told them that the wine was to be the reminder of his blood that would be shed for them on the cross. He told them that whenever they ate the bread and drank the wine, it was to remind them of what he had done for them. We still eat the bread and drink the wine today, and when we do, we do it to help us remember that Jesus, what Jesus has done for us. Like this picture, World Communion Sunday is needed to remind us that our brothers and sisters around the world are praying and singing in their own languages, in their own communities, but since we are all followers of Christ, we are also one global church. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for giving us this picture to remind us of what you did for us when you died on the cross. Help us to remember and be thankful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much, little guy. Thank you so much, young disciples. As uh, Lil Guy said, today is World Communion Sunday, and we will have our communion later. And um, as you can see, we prepared individually wrapped bread. You can choose what you want, but just touch one and get it. And then if you want uh, juice, we'll open it, and then or water. So, um, and we have flags uh, from different countries, and I hope that you can see your flag there. What we're going to do when we have the communion, we will all go forward. Uh, we'll line up social distancing. And then when you come forward, I would like to ask you to take a moment of silence to pray for the world. Every hour, because this is World Communion, every hour when, when uh, service starts, people all around the world are having communion. All Christians. So we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world and also pray for the people in our countries too. For the news, I would like you to go to your uh, bulletin at the back of your bulletin. Please refer to that. October is laity month. So um, every Sunday we will have a group 
of uh, organization that will lead us. Next Sunday, we will have the United Methodist Women. After the worship outside, we will have the blessing of animals after worship. Then uh, after, war after blessing the animals around 12.30, the nominating committee will have a meeting. And then, I'm sorry that October 10 is a busy Sunday. After that, the SPRC will meet 1.30. It is side-by-side, uh, -side, back to back for Elmer. Uh, meeting in person at 1.30. The, on October 17, the children in, and the youth will uh, lead our worship. And then October 19, we will have charge, uh, church conf I'm sorry, this is charge conference via Zoom with Reverend William Williams. But everybody, uh, you are all welcome to join the church conference. And today is Miss Grace Kosnick's uh, birthday. She's the mother of Janet Henkel. And also on Saturday, good morning. Uh, Miss Jeannie, and thank you for being the liturgist. It is Miss Jeannie's uh, birthday on Saturday, and they will have a concert, Canticles for Life, at 2 p.m. So if you are interested, please uh, reach out to her. It is live and it is via Zoom. So please um, uh, tell Miss Jeannie if you want to uh, join the concert. The Board of Trustees will meet tonight at 7 p.m. via Zoom. I, I believe we are going to use our uh, Sunday Zoom uh, meeting ID. So that's uh, for our church announce announcement. Do you have any uh, announcement or anything you want to announce? That's just announcement, right? Or prayer request. Yes, Pastor Don. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you, Pastor Don. And um, the, the Sunday school for kids, they're downstairs if you want uh, Kyrie. And uh, they are there downstairs. So uh, if you want, they're right, um, yes, playing. And just go downstairs with uh, Ali. And uh, so we continue to pray for Miss Linda Hobbs. Any more prayer requests? And we would like to thank today our participants, liturgist, Miss Jeannie Johnston, our uh, praise and worship, uh, is Dustin and Miss Jeannie. Thank you so much, Dustin, and our pianist, uh, Mr. Dan Chrissy, and Acolyte is uh, Nicole, Sunday School is Miss Cecilia, IT is uh, Risha and Guy. So, uh, Thank you so much for participating, and if you don't have any more announcement, let us bow our heads and let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this uh, day. Thank you that we woke up, and thank you, Lord, for giving us a wonderful day, the sun, the air, the flowers. Thank you. Thank you for our lives. Thank you for our families, for our loved ones. Thank you for the smiles. Thank you, Lord. There's so many things that we want to thank you for because you're an amazing God, and thank you. And Lord, you know each and every one of us. You know our hearts. You know our minds. We just ask you, Lord, for us to continue to, to meet us where we are. 
continue to help us navigate our way, our journey in this still pandemic season. And Lord, we just ask you to protect us and shield us with your holy blood. And may we continue to walk according to your will in our lives. And may we step up to the purpose you want us to do. And may we glorify your name in everything we say, we, we think, we do. May your name be glorified and may people know that you are Lord through our lives. And Lord, help each and every one of us and meet, meet us today if we are sick, if some of our friends, families, members, if they are sick, heal them, heal us. Lord, if we are, if we need to make a decision in our lives, help us. Enlighten us, guide us. And Lord, if we need provision, whatever it is, Lord, provide for us. You are Jehovah Jireh, our great provider. And Lord, be our Father. Continue to teach us. Be our mother, continue to nurture us. Be our friend, continue to help us. And be a shoulder to cry on. And Lord, thank you because you are our living God. You know, you see what's going on. And we thank you because we believe that you want the best for us and you're leading us to the place where it is your pleasing, your good and perfect will. And Lord, we acknowledge that you will talk to us, you will heal us, you will provide for us this day and always. And your name may be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer for illumination. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. If you are able, please stand for the reading of today's scripture. It comes from the uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 34. I have already told you what the Lord Jesus did on the night he was betrayed, and it came from the Lord himself. He took some bread in his hands, then after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Eat this and remember me. After the meal, Jesus took a cup of wine in his hands and said, this is my blood, and with it God makes his new agreement with you. Drink this and remember me. The Lord meant that when you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you tell about his death until he comes. But if you eat the bread and drink the wine in a way that isn't worthy of the Lord, you sin against his body and blood. That's why you must examine the way you eat and drink. If you fail to understand that you are the body of the Lord, you will condemn yourselves by the way you eat and drink. That's why many of you are sick and weak and why lots of other, a lot of others have died. If we carefully judge ourselves, we won't be punished. But when the Lord judges and punishes us, he does it to keep us from being condemned with the rest of the world. My dear friends, you should wait until everyone gets there before you start eating. If you really are hungry, you can eat at home. Then you won't condemn yourselves when you meet together. After I arrive, I will instruct you, instruct you about the other matters. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. Please be seated. World communion in the midst of a global venom. You know, just I just put it like that because we all know that uh, the global venom now is uh, COVID-19. So how do we do a world, how do we do communion in the midst of this uh, time where we cannot be touching each other and being close? How should we receive the Holy Communion at this point in the COVID-19 pandemic? 
As COVID-19 pandemic has caused many congregations to move worship online, a lot of us are concerned about our inability to partake in traditional communion services. Our leaders then thought and suggested the love feast. So those of you who are um, joining us via Zoom and those who are joining us via Facebook, I would like to give you a moment where, where you can get a bread or rice or whatever you have so that in the partake in the moment when we partake the bread and the wine you will be um, ready to join us love feast what is a love feast what is a love feast compared to holy communion the love feast or agape feast is an ancient church practice in which christians come together to share bread and water or other beverage. Wine is usually not used to avoid confusion with Holy Communion. Participants often also share full meal as they pray and offer thanksgivings. Unlike Communion, the Love Feast does not require the participation of a clergy person and can occur in homes or other settings where family members or close friends gather. Today, People might come to a common sacred place or virtual spa space or table online or by phone to pray together, offer blessing, eat crackers or fruit or bread, and drink juice or water. It is the gathering and the intentional bonding in community, the love, rather than the feast that brings meaning. Even though we do things differently, during the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, the pandemic took a lot from us. Some of us, you know, um, we lost people, we lost jobs, we lost businesses, we lost our feelings, seen and unseen. And we might not be able to, let, to return back from where we used to be or what we used to be. But the God in our homes, the God in our midst is the same God we worship in spite of all these changes. God remains the same. God is not different. We are. Today we celebrate the World Communion Sunday in spite of the pandemic, God remains the same. His message never lost its meaning, but rather becomes more meaningful to all of us. Today, I want us to remember three important things to take away. We search our hearts, we remember, we move forward. We search our hearts. If there ever is, if there ever is a time when we should do some serious or reverent heart searching, it is in preparation for taking the Lord's Supper. Paul says that we are to examine ourselves not to discover whether we are worthy to participate, but to determine if we are partaking in a worthy manner and for a worthy purpose. Several years ago in England, a man wrote to the editor of the British Weekly. In his letter, the writer reported that he would not remember any sermon preached in any of the churches he had attended. Because of that, the man questioned whether sermons were really as important as preachers thought they were. I have been attending a church service for the past 30 years, he said, and I have heard probably 3,000 sermons. To my consternation, he continued, I discovered that I cannot remember a single sermon. As a result of that letter, many readers of the British Weekly wrote replies. They were published in the letters to the editor column. One letter seemed to go to the heart of the problem posed by the listener of all those sermons. This letter writer stated, I have been married for 30 years. During that time, I have eaten 32,850 meals, mostly of my wife's cooking. 
Suddenly, I have discovered that I cannot remember the menu of a single meal. And yet, I receive nourishment from every single one of them. I have the distinct impression that without them, I would have starved to death long ago. No one merits the privilege of sitting at the Lord's table. But by God's grace, we are given the privilege of becoming His children and having fellowship with Him. The psalmist prayer is always appropriate as we seek to create a proper attitude for the observance of the Lord's Supper. In Psalm 139, the psalmist said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. We search our hearts. Just like the man, the husband, he searched his heart after 32,000 mil. He might have not remembered all those, might not have remembered all those meals, but what he knows is that without those meals, he would have starved to death. Second, we remember. I, I read an, a commentary by Edward Chin. He said, Edward Bock was an American journalist who became editor of Ladies' Home Journal in 1889. For 30 years, Edward Bock and the journal worked for such causes as the Better Babies Movement, teaching social hygiene to children, beautifying American cities, and improving home architecture. Bock recounted, recounted that he always kept the memory of the death of his mother sacred. April 30 was the anniversary of her death. Each year on that date, at 3.20 p.m. in the afternoon, Bok always took out his watch and thought of her. I was just talking to Nai Nai, and Tatay's uh, death anniversary was just recently. When was that? Yesterday. Yesterday. You know, we always remember the death anniversary. So Bok always took out his watch and thought of her, regardless of what he was then doing or where he was at the time. On one of the anniversaries of her death, Bok was with some of his friends. He saw that the time of his mother's death was drawing near. He became quiet, thoughtful, and finally withdrew to one side of the room lost in his thoughts. He lived over again some of the experiences he had enjoyed with his mother. When we remember those who passed that are close to us, and we remember those times, and this is what's happening to Bo. When he returned to the table where his friends were sitting, one of them said, Do you know you look exactly like your mother? just now when you were standing over there by the wall. Bok replied, yes, I was thinking about her. The sacrament of the Holy Communion tell us about the person who is at the center of our faith. That person is Jesus Christ. As we live in Holy Communion with the person of Christ, we tend to grow into his likeness. Think of some home where, you know, where husband and wife have loved one another and lived together for many years. Sharing ideas, developing common tastes, experiencing common feelings, they have come to resemble one another. I remember one time, Miss Mary all said, you know, Bill Sinkowitz, when he looked at me, he said he remembered my husband. Sometimes that happens. When we're always together, it seems that, you know, you, you think of the person, you think of the husband or the wife, you think of the, the person that, that they lived a long time ago and that they love. Sharing ideas, they resemble to one another. This is the fact to which St. Paul pointed in the third chapter of his second letter to the Corinthians. We all reflect as in a mirror 
the splendor or the glory of the Lord. Thus we are transfigured into his likeness. From glory to glory, from splendor to splendor. Henry Drummond paraphrased false, Paul's words in this way. We all reflecting as a mirror, the character of Christ, are transformed into the same image from character to character. Every time we come to church and receive the bread and wine, juice or water, we are proclaiming the death of Jesus Christ in whose likeness we are to be shaped. From, for from the very beginning, God decided that those who came to him should become like his son so that his son would be the first with many brothers. We remember the person of Jesus so we can be more like him. Third, we move forward. After telling his Corinthian friends that by the actions of eating and drinking, they were retelling the message of Christ's death, Paul wrote, do this until he comes again. Those first Christians live under the spell of Christ's promise to, co to come again. In his book, The Theology of Jewish Christianity, John Danilu discusses about the custom in the early days of the church for Christians to paint a cross on the eastern wall of their homes and their meeting places. Where is east? East? And then north? South, east, west. So those times, Christians, they they just put a painting on the east side. There. So that's what they call in the Pongsoy. Maybe the east. They use that in Pongsoy. Okay, this is the east. This is where our uh, door will be. The east side. Because that's what Christians do. They they. This cross was not simply put on the wall to remind them of the suffering of Christ which had happened in the past. On the contrary, the sign of the cross was placed on that particular wall to mark the east from which Christ was expected to come again in power and great glory. So it's not only the death but the coming of Jesus Christ. He will come from the east. Christians in later times would forget the original reason why the cross was placed on the east wall. They did not know that it was an emblem of the future things to come. They had lost this sense of the forward look. They made the cross exclusively a memorial of Christ's death in the past. The sacrament of the Holy Communion tells us about the promise of Christ to return. Though men may forget that the cross has this future aspect, God made sure that this element of faith would not be forever forgotten. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper tells us the message, I shall come again and receive you to myself, so that where I am, you may be also. The Lord's Supper is an acted sermon in which the message of Christ's death is retold as it is commemorated. As we receive the bread and drink from the cup or get the water, we are announcing our love for the person of Christ, our remembrance of the passion of Christ, and our anticipation of the promise of Christ. Three important things. We search our hearts. We remember. We move forward. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would like to request Jeannie to help me for the communion.
Jesus was always the guest. At the meal tables of the wealthy where he pled the case of the poor, he was always the guest. But here, at this table, Jesus is the host. For this is the table where God intends us to be nourished. This is the time when Christ can make us new. So come, you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a fuller life, for better world. Holy God, we praise you, for you are the one from whom we will return. You conceived the universe, wove the world together, and hold all life in your hand. So with rain, wind, and sunshine, with all that moves in time with its maker, we praise you. We praise you for Christ's life which informs our living, for his compassion which changes our hearts, for his clear speaking, for his disturbing presence, his innocent suffering, his courageous dying, his rising to life, breathing forgiveness, we praise you and worship him. Merciful God, send now in kindness your Holy Spirit to rest on converting us from the patterns of this passing world until we conform to the shape of the one whose food we now share. Amen. Among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread broke it and said this is my body broken for you later he took the cup and said this is the relationship with God made possible because of my death take it all of you to remember me. Christ, whom the universe could not contain, is present to us in the breaking of this bread. Christ, who redeemed us and called us by name, now meets us in the sharing of this cup. So take this bread and this cup, the water. In this meal, God comes to us so that may, we may come to God. We can all stand the body of Christ here, open the table of God is here. We remember Jesus' death and we partake in his suffering. And as we partake, we also move forward and look forward to the coming of Jesus the Christ. Please stand and let us ask those who are in front to come first, have social distancing, and you can get water. And if you want to have a hand sanitizer first, please put it. Bread and wine or water or juice. You can get either grape or water 
and then get a bread. The body of Jesus Christ given for you, the blood of God given for you. Body of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ. The body of Jesus Christ given for you. The blood of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ broken for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Body of Jesus Christ broken for you. Blood of Jesus Christ. Body of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ. Body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ given for you. In the blood of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ given for you. The blood of Jesus Christ given for you. The body of Jesus Christ given for you. And the blood of Jesus Christ. Body of Jesus Christ given for you. The blood of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ given for you. The blood of Jesus Christ. We will um, ask the kids to come. As you sit down, I would like to request you to take a moment of silence to, to pray, to pray for our countries, for the world, And since this is World Communion, the table is open for everybody and even our children. Body of Jesus Christ given for you, the blood of Jesus Christ given for you. The body of Jesus Christ given for you, and the blood of Jesus Christ given for you. Yes. The body of Jesus Christ given for you, and the blood of Jesus Christ.
body of Jesus Christ given for you. The blood of Jesus Christ. The body of Jesus Christ given for you and the blood of Jesus Christ. body of Jesus Christ and the blood of Jesus Christ. In peace, let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks for uniting us as the body of Christ and for filling us with joy at this table. Lead us toward the unity of your church and help us stress your signs of reconciliation. Now that we have tasted the banquet you have prepared for us, may we one day feast together in your heavenly city. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Amen. For those of you who have not uh, given your offering, we will have Dan play a little music and then we will stand for the doxology.
please join together in our offering prayer. Dear God, for whom and through whom all things exist, you are the sovereign of the universe, yet you have named us among your beloved children and call us to live as brothers and sisters of Christ. On this World Communion Sunday, we rejoice that you gather us around the table of your Son, the risen Lord. May our offerings reach out to bring hope and grace to our near and distant neighbors, whom you know and love. In Christ we pray. Amen. And please remain standing for our closing hymn, To God Be the Glory, in the hymnal number 98.
ruler of all, Lord of all creation. Thank you for your presence here with us on this table. Restore your love that you called each of us from the beginning. Your love for us exceeds how we think of each other. Your love is great to cover our different looks. Your love is living peace that embraces each of us. You make us remember each of the unique images that you gave us from the beginning. Help us all to accept and remember that you love each of us differently in different ways. Let us receive the benediction. By God's amazing grace, we are the body of Christ. And because of that, let us go into the world with Christ's image, remembering his death on the cross because of his love for us, and moving forward, working until his return. Let us go, know, let us go knowing that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. And now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask or imagine, according to the power that is at work within us. To him be the glory, honor, and praises. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. There are four boxes of corn in the cob downstairs, so please, 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 please get some and take it home and take it to your family, to your friends, and also broccoli. I think, I don't know if the broccoli will work, but please get 